to say uh, good afternoon to sons and daughters of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, spiritual and physical, here in Chicago. I still feel like I'm talking in my own ear. So uh, is there any chance you can get it down a little bit and get me out of my ear? I would sure appreciate it. We're not going to talk. Uh, uh, I'm not going to speak to the people out of town because the phone system is not what it should be. But I understand that all of them are online. And that's good. So we're going to get right to this lesson, sisters and brothers. You know, we had some people that kept this last year. I mean, it's the last w week. And I have people calling me trying to argue the point that we are wrong. That's because everybody's following Esau. And what they don't understand is that we're the priest, not Edom. It's all that simple. You see, then I heard a sister call me from Michigan. And she was somebody was about to mess her up. But they said, she said, well, they said it wasn't on three days and three nights in the law. I said, but you had a first fruit in the law. See, sisters and brothers, you got to understand one thing. Everything that the Lord did and do physically and did with Israel has spiritual meanings. But men, if, uh, if you are among those that have a problem with Jesus and you are physical, Thinking you will never understand the truth. It's just like when you get to pre the brothers that's trying to make the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened bread the same day. You know why? You know what that tells me? That they don't have a clue of what's going on. You know why? It's because you can't have a Feast of Unleavened bread or either a Feast without sin without having the sins purged first. And you cannot purge sin without blood. That's why the past, that's why a feast of unleavened bread came after the Passover, because the blood of the lamb purged the people of their sins, and leavening represents sin. So once they was purged, then you're supposed to have the rest of your life sin free. But don't nobody understand that. You know what? Because everybody's physical. They don't have a clue what's going on. It's just like when they're talking about the, the strangers that was brought into uh, uh, the covenant with Abraham. Right away, the Lord said, told Abraham to uh, uh, circumcise all the males in your house. And those that are bought with money from among the strangers circumcise that too. What's that mean? Abraham can't buy everything, but that represents the ones that's purchased with the blood of Jesus. So we have all these priests running around here need to learn how to become priests. And I'm not going to lie to you, sisters and brothers. Sometimes it stresses me. Because when you deal with this thing, sisters and brothers, you're dealing with the Passover. And nobody understands what the Passover is. They're still running around killing cows because they don't believe in Jesus. And then if you're going to follow somebody, they're going to follow Esau. And then get on the phone and argue with me about we being wrong. You know, I'm going to tell you something. The Lord didn't tell me nothing about the time of the barley that come in. He said on the 14th day of the month, Abib is the Lord's Passover. The 14th day of the month, Abib, fell this year on Friday evening. So if you kept the Passover Friday evening, then Jesus ate the Passover. And then he, because he was the Passover, he had to be crucified on the 14th day in the daytime. Doesn't mean he died Saturday. I'm talking about this year. I ain't talking about 2,000 years ago. So if he died Saturday, that means he was in the grave Saturday night, Sunday night, and Monday night. So how can I make this way, uh, way the first fruit before the Lord and it was still in the ground? I get tired of answering people that's supposed to have some knowledge are always getting thrown off by people that have no knowledge. People that come out of me had it last week. And I know who they follow. They follow an eater. 
So the way I look at it, all that time I invested in him is wasted. And I'm going to say to these brothers, some of them still call me. I know you can hear me. Don't call me no more. Because I'm tired of it, sister and brother. I am tired of it. My brother, you ain't my brother. I'm going to go Jesus on you. Who is my brother? And who are my mother? Those that do the will of my father. That's my brother. And if you can't do it like that, then don't call me no more. We're going to start this. This is the day, sisters and brothers, really, this Pentecost represent the year that the Lord is coming. But we're going to deal with this. We're going to start in 23rd chapter because this is a great, great time. Because Leviticus 23, because this, sisters and brothers, I tell people all the time, when you understand the 23rd chapter of Leviticus, you understand the plan of God. He put it all in the book. And all we have to do is read it. We got brothers who want to go out and research this and research that and read this book about this and read this book about that to try and say, deal with wisdom. And you don't even know the word of God. That is the only wisdom in the whole creation. So we're going to start at Genesis, uh, Leviticus, the 23rd chapter and verse 1. Leviticus 23 and verse 1. Okay, go ahead. Give me some mic here. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, uh -huh. Speaking to the children of Israel and saying to them, Go ahead. Concerning the feast of the Lord, uh -huh. which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, even these are my feasts. So these are the feasts of the Lord, sisters and brothers, not the feast of the Jews. These are the feast of the Lord. Skip down to verse 4 and go ahead. These are the feasts of the Lord, even holy convocations, uh -huh. which ye shall proclaim in their seasons. These are feasts of the Lord, even holy gathering that you are supposed to proclaim in their seed. Now let's go skip down to verse 9. We're going to get right now to what we're here for. And we're going to pay some attention here, sisters and brothers. Verse 9, go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, uh -huh. speaking to the children of Israel and saying to them, when ye be coming to the land which I give unto you, and shall reap the harvest thereof, uh -huh. and ye shall bring a sheaf of the first fruit of your harvest unto the priest. Now, when you come in, when you reap the harvest, you're going to bring a first fruit to the priest. Now, sister and brother, harvest means that it is out of the ground. Right. You can't reap the fruit of the harvest if it's still in the ground. In other words, it's up now. Your crop is grown. It is ready to be picked. Go ahead and reap. And... He shall wave the sheaf before the Lord to be accepted for you. Uh -huh. On the morrow after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it. So now when you wave this sheaf, you can only wave it on the first day of the week, which is called Sunday. Because that's the morrow after the Sabbath. It don't matter when the uh, uh, sheaf is waved. You have to wait until the morrow after the Sabbath, when it's come out of the ground, before you can wave it to the Lord. In other words, it has to be waved on the first day of the week. Go ahead and read. Right. And ye shall offer that day when ye wave the sheaf and he land without blemish of the first year for a burnt offering unto the Lord. Now, this has gone by somebody. This has gone by somebody. You, have all, you shall offer that day a he lamb without blemish before the Lord. Right. This lamb, sisters and brothers, represent Jesus. That's why he put him there. So you will understand what you are dealing with. Here's the he lamb of the first year without blemish. And we're going to show you what happened with Jesus. Let's go into St. John, the 20th chapter. St. John, chapter 20. See, somewhere along the line, somebody has pulled salt on the New Testament. And once you condemn the New Testament, you have condemned yourself. 
because the Lord had Isaiah right to the law and to the testimony. To the law and to the testimony. Isaiah 8 chapter. If they speak not according to that, there is no light in them. In other words, to the Old Testament and to the New. Yes, Old Testament and to the New. If they speak not according to that, there is no truth in them, sister and brother. The Lord fixed this thing because he always had one thing point to another. People don't understand that Moses was a prototype of Jesus. That's the way the Lord operates. You don't understand how he operates. You're out here messing people up with your non-understanding. St. John 20 and verse 1. We're going to pay some attention here. Go ahead and read. The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early when it was yet dark uh -huh. to the sepulcher and see at the stone taken away from the sepulcher. First thing is we're going to learn something on our way to learn something. When they got to the sepulcher, while Jesus was, was laid, it was still dark, and he was gone. Right. So much for the sunrise service. He rose on Sunday morning. He was, it was still dark. Go ahead and read. Then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter and to the other disciples whom Jesus loved and said unto them, uh -huh. They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulcher, and we know not where they have laid him. So he wasn't there. He was gone. Go ahead and read. Peter therefore went forth. And that other disciple and came to the sepulcher. Now, Peter went and all of them went to look. And they looked and found out that he wasn't there. Eventually they left. But Mary was still trying to figure that thing out. Skip down to verse 8. Verse 8 and go ahead. Then went in also that other disciple which came first to the sepulcher. And he saw and believed. Uh -huh. For as yet they knew not the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. Now look, sisters and brothers. The uh, uh, apostles, it took, over time, their understanding started to come to them. They didn't have this boom, that solid understanding when they walk around Jesus. That's why Jesus had to check them so many times. Right. Like when he told them, beware the leaven and other Pharisees. They were looking around trying to figure out, oh, we forgot to bring bread. Right. He said, I ain't talking about bread. So they didn't know that he was supposed to rise. Go ahead and read. What verse was that? Ten. Uh-huh. Then the disciples went away again into their own home. Uh -huh. But Mary stood without at the sepulcher weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulcher. Because she's trying to figure out what happened to the Lord. Skip down to verse 14. Verse 14. And go ahead. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing and knew not that it was Jesus. Uh huh. And Jesus said unto her, woman, why weepest thou? Go ahead. Whom seekest thou? Uh -huh. She supposed him to be the gardener, said unto him, Go ahead. Sir, if thou have borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Go ahead. Jesus said unto her, Mary. She turned herself and said unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Then she, under, she recognized who he was, because she was still trying to figure out, what they, figure out what they had done with his body. So when he turned around and uh, he said, Mary, then she turned around and said, Master. But look what Jesus said to her when he said that. Go ahead and read. Jesus said unto her, touch me not. Touch me not. Why? Go ahead. For I'm not yet ascending to my father. Uh huh. But go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father, to my God and your God. Now, he didn't want that woman to touch him because he had not been accepted because he was the first fruit, sisters and brothers. And let's show you what I mean. Let's go into 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. See, people don't read, and they want to put a spin on stuff. And then when you, when you don't put a spin on and go along with them, they're all upset. <laughs> Maybe you need to check out who you're working for. 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. And we're going to start reading at verse 12. 1 Corinthians 15. And verse 12, because this is talking about the resurrection here, sisters and brothers. Verse 12, go ahead. Now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? And we still having people among Israelites, especially that say no resurrection. Then what are you here for? Right. Then why are you running around on the corner hollering and talking crazy to people? There ain't no resurrection. You talk crazy, you might live, get a shorter life. 
and you ain't coming back. Maybe you don't want to be here much longer. We always have people talking about there ain't no resurrection of the dead. Go ahead and read. But if there be no resurrection of the dead, uh-huh. then is Christ not risen. So now, if there is no resurrection, then Jesus didn't rise from the dead. This whole thing was a concocted lie. But that is not the case. Skip down to verse 20. Verse 20. Verse 20. And go ahead. But now is Christ risen from the dead uh-huh. and become the first fruits of them that slept. He's risen from the dead and become the first fruit of them that slept. You know, the Lord, I notice how the Lord is always careful in his servant the way they put certain things. He had to be, say, the first fruit of them that slept because he was not the first that, was, when it, that, that became a spirit being. Right. Enoch was the first man that did. But Jesus is the first one that was dead and rose as a spirit being. Right. Go ahead and read. For since by man came death, uh-huh. by man came also the resurrection of the dead. Go ahead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. And as in Adam all die. So in Jesus all go made, be made alive. Go ahead and read. But every man in his own order. But every man in his own order. Christ the first fruit. Christ the first fruit. Afterwards they that are Christ at his coming. Afterwards they that are Christ at his coming, sister and brother. This go uh, coincide with the 23rd chapter of Levitical, sister and brother. Because once you start the wave ship, the day, that first day, and uh, uh, and. Before the Father, then you count your 50 days, then here come another resurrection. Yes. We're going to look at it. But they come when he returns. Right. Jesus is the first fruit, sisters and brothers. But I don't understand why people say people in heaven, and you read this. They always read Paul's writing. How come nobody ever read this part of Paul's writing yet? But it says, everybody in his order, they, Christ the first fruit, and those that are here at his coming, is he here? No, sir. If he is not here, then where are they? In the grave. You know, it don't take a rocket scientist to realize that God ain't no complicated God. He speaks plain. So, now, Jesus was the first fruit, and the rest going to come. It going to be raised at his coming. Now, let's go back to Leviticus, the 23rd chapter, because we're going to be in and out of here, because I want you to, to know why that this woman couldn't touch Jesus. We just read because he, are, he is the first fruit. And this is why she couldn't touch it. Leviticus 23. Leviticus 23. And we're going to start at verse 14. Leviticus 23. And we're going to start at verse 14. 23 and 14. 23 and 14. Okay, read. And ye shall eat neither bread, nor parched corn, nor green ears, until the selfsame day that ye have brought an offering unto your God. Uh-huh. It shall be a statue forever throughout your generations in all your dwellings. Now, that's why he couldn't touch her. Or she couldn't touch him because he said, you shall eat neither bread, nor parched corn, nor green ears, until the same self, self same day that you had brought an offering before God. So she could not touch him. She, that's like taking part in him until he was accepted. Right. Later on, he wouldn't get accepted. Then he run them same women and they grabbed him by the feet. Because he had been accepted. Right. But then once you do that, there's something else we have to do. Keep reading. And he shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath. From the day that ye brought the sheaf of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be complete. And you shall count unto you tomorrow after the Sabbath. Yes, sir. From the day that you brought the wave offering, seven Sabbaths. So it always must start on the first day of the week, sisters and brothers. Because if you start on the second day of the week, once you count seven weeks, Minus one day and plus one day, you got 49 days. You don't have 50, which means Pentecost. Pentecost means 50. Ain't got nothing to do with holy. Even though some holy stuff going to happen on that day or on that year. Right. What verse was that? That was the end of 15. Go ahead. Even until the morrow after the seventh Sabbath shall ye number 50 days. And ye shall offer a new meat offering unto the Lord. Even until the morrow after. So you count 
Start counting on the first day of the week, and you count seven Sabbaths, and then you go one more day. Then you offer a new meat offering to the Lord. Go ahead. You notice the word new meat offering? Yep. Go ahead and read. You shall bring out of your habitation two wave loaves of two tenth deal. Uh-huh. They shall be a fine flour. They shall be baking with leaven. They are the first fruits unto the Lord. Now, these, uh, this first fruit, he said, going to be baked with leaven. In other words, sister and brother, these were people that had sin that was removed. Right. The first one, unleavened, because Jesus ain't never sinned. But these are the same. Now, the first one, we offered one lamb. Go ahead and read. 18. He shall offer with the bread seven lambs without blemish of the first year. Seven lambs without blemish. Then that seven is a complete act. Yeah. Because these are the people that's going to come up in the first resurrection. Like I said, Jesus is the first fruit and those that are his at his coming. So he couldn't put the number of all the people that's going to come up in the first resurrection. So he put seven lambs to represent everybody in the first resurrection, sister and brother. These things people don't pay no attention to. Well, we're going to have Pentecost for what? You don't believe in Jesus? You don't believe in the resurrection? Why are you here? Right. Finish that verse. Middle 18. And one young bullock and two rams. They shall be for a burnt offering unto the Lord with their meat offering and their drink offerings, even an offering made by fire of sweet savor unto the Lord. So now, Jesus, when he come, he, when he rose, he was the first fruit sister and brother. And he showed himself many days. Let's go into Acts, the first chapter. Acts chapter 1. And we're going to start reading. At verse 1. Acts chapter 1 and verse 1. Acts 1 and 1. Okay, go ahead. The former treaties have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. Uh huh. Until the day in which he was taken up. After that, he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. Now, just like it was before he came, he gave commandments. To Israel through his prophets. Now, he, when he went back, he started giving commandments through the same angel to his apostles so they can do the word. The Lord went back to the same thing. Go ahead and read. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Now, he, they saw him for 40 days. He showed them. Because he's going to know that somebody's going to say he didn't raise. So he had him a lot of people that witnessed his resurrection. Go ahead and read. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which said he, ye have heard of me. Now, we know that they needed some more spiritual enlightenment, sisters and brothers, because they didn't even understand that he was going to be raised from the dead. Right. So, so before you go out and try to teach somebody, you go back to Jerusalem and wait until you get some power from on high. Right. Now let's skip down to verse 8. Verse 8 and go ahead. For ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Uh-huh. Ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and into the uttermost parts of the earth. So now if you're going to be witnesses to him and all these people, that means you have to teach everybody, don't yes, Go ahead and read. And when he has spoken these things... While they beheld, he was taken up, and the cloud received them out of their sight. Now, that's the last time that Jesus was on this earth. He took off, and he haven't been back since. But when he come back, he's going to come to the same place. Mm -hmm. Now, let's look at Israel doing something, what Israel has been do doing since they come out of captivity. Let's go down. Let's go into Acts, the second chapter. Acts, chapter 2. Acts, chapter 2. And let's start at verse 1. Acts 2 and 1. Go ahead. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, uh -huh. they were all with one accord in one place. Uh -huh. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Now you get people out here saying that this is when the church took over. Day of Pentecost. Sisters and brothers, the day of Pentecost is also called the Feast of Weeks. Yes, Wasn't nobody there but Israelites. Ain't nobody interested. 
It's just like right now. What do they call this day? The Jews' feast. The Jews feast. So when the day of Pentecost was fully come, all these people was here but one accord, and all of a sudden the sound come in like a rushing wind. And we are going to investigate that a little bit, but read the verse. What verse is that? Three? Th third verse. Go ahead. And there appeared into them cloven tongues, like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. Now this cloven tongue, sister and brother, I'm going to show you that look, this ain't nothing, there wasn't nothing but a flock of angels that's coming there. And these tongues set by each one of these people. And look like everybody was speaking in, uh-uh, but we're going to show you everybody wasn't speaking in one time. We had one person speaking or another person speaking, and the rest of them was listening. Right. But before we go there, I need, you need to understand how the Lord work. These angels come in, all they showed was their tongue. But angels do step like that. I don't know whether they want to bring the drummer or the Lord tell them to use the drummer. Right. Only thing they had to know for sure that they had to do was deliver the message that the Lord sent. But let's look at how the angels operate sometimes. But you can keep your place in Acts. We're going to be in and out of Acts. But let's go into Exodus, the third chapter. People don't pay attention, especially if you don't read the Old Testament and you're a New Testament Christian, you don't have a clue what's going on. Exodus, the third chapter, and we're going to start reading at verse 3. This is about Moses now. Moses had went out to Egypt to escape from Pharaoh that tried to kill him. Now the Lord is getting ready to send Moses back to Egypt to deliver Israel. And let's see how he did this. Three and one. Go ahead. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight while the bush is now burnt. Now Moses saw a bush that was burning and this bush wouldn't burn up. Now that's going to get your attention, isn't it? So he said, I'm going to turn now and look at this great sight because I want to know why this bush is not burning up. Go ahead and read. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him, out of the midst of the bush and said, uh -huh. Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. Go ahead. And he said, Draw not nigh hither, put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place where on thy standest is holy ground. He said, now, The Lord called to him out of it, sisters and brothers. And he said, Pull your foot off, shoes off, because the ground you standing on is holy. Go ahead and read. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father. God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. You know, it looked like we missed something here. Then you better get on your, on your ball, brother, because this is the I'm important fine. thing. Pay attention. And we're going to start this back from the top. Three and one. That's all right. Go ahead. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. Uh -huh. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God. Even the horror. Uh-huh. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. That's what I was looking for. I don't remember hearing you read that. You told me three, brother. The angel of the Lord. See, the angel was in the bush. And he peered unto him. But before the Lord spoke, the angel was in the bush. Right. So who spoke to him out of the bush? Go ahead and read. And he looked. And behold, the bush burned with fire. And the bush was not consumed. Go ahead. And Moses said. I would now turn aside and see this great sight, or the bush is not burnt. Uh-huh. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. Uh-huh. And he said, Draw not nigh hither. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Now the words was the Lord, sister and brother, but it was that angel that spoke to Moses out of the bush. Right. That's the way it is. That's why when the Lord told Israel, I'm going to send my angel before you. Obey him. He will not deliver uh, upon your sin. Obey his voice and do all that I say. Right. So now, Moses didn't see the angel, but the angel was in the bush. He did something dramatic to get Moses' attention, sisters and brothers. But did Moses say, I'm looking at this bush and it ain't burning up? I'm going to go see what is going on. 
That's one way the Lord used drama to get man's attention. Yes, because this man, he needs something. Now let's look at another, but what was in the bush? An angel, what? An angel. Now let's go into Daniel's the fifth chapter. Daniel's the fifth chapter. Because the Lord wants to send somebody else a message. Let's see how he did it. Daniel's chapter 5. And we're going to start reading at verse 1. Daniel's 5 and 1. Daniel's 5. And we're going to start reading at verse 1. Go ahead. Belshazzar the king made a great feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before the thousand. Uh-huh. Belshazzar, while he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the gold and, and silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple, which was in Jerusalem, uh -huh. that the king and his princes, his wives and his concubines might drink therein. Now this Belshazzar, Nebuchadnezzar's son, he threw this great big old power at all his wives and his concubines. It was all right. But where he dropped the ball was, he sent and got the holy vessels that Nebuchadnezzar, his daddy, got out of Jerusalem, a right. temple in Jerusalem when he took it down. And look what they drank to. Go ahead and read. Then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of God, which was at Jerusalem. Uh-huh. And the king and his princes, his wives and his concubines drank in them. Uh-huh. They drank wine and praised the gods of gold and of silver, of brass and of iron, of wood and of stone. Now they praised every god, material god, stuff that they can see and profit from physically, but they did not praise the god in whose breath they hand, in whose hand their breath was in, the God of Israel. God didn't like that. Go ahead and read. In the same hour came four fingers of a man's hand and wrote over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. Uh huh. And the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. Then the king's countenance was changed and his thoughts troubled him so that the joints of his loins were loose and his knees smote one against another. He got his attention, didn't he? He up there, they drinking and drinking the silver and gold and everything. All of a sudden, hand pops up, poof. And just go, I'll put his shoulder, the Lord had it pop up on one side of the room and took his time and went all the way over to the plaster on the wall. And he wrote the plaster on the wall. This team was so scared, he sobered up in a minute there. Yeah, he did. You ever been so scared that your knees knocked? That's what was happening. His knees smote one to another. That's scared, sister and brother. But that was drama. You didn't see nothing connected to that hand. Mm -mm. All you see is them fingers come across. And then the Lord had a message. They all have a message. Skip down to verse 26. Like Moses, that angel told Moses, I'm going to send you back down to Egypt to deliver my people to Israel. Now, here's a message to this son of Nebuchadnezzar. Verse 26, go ahead. This is the interpretation of the theme. And this is the interpretation of what was written on the plaster of the wall. Daniel broke it down to him. Go ahead and read. Many. God have numbered thy kingdom and finished it. Many. God have numbered your kingdom and finished it. Go ahead and read. To kill. Uh-huh. Thou art weighed in the balances and found wound. To kill, thou art weighed in the balance, and you have come up lacking, mister. Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. Perez. Uh-huh. That kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. And your kingdom have been divided and given. Not will be. Right. I've already divided it and given it to the Medes and the Persians. Right. And they mean he meant it. Skip down to verse 30 and read it. In that night was Belshazzar the king of the Chaldeans slain. Then the Lord had him killed that very night. Mm-hmm. Because he's going to drink out of the holy vessels. And he is going to drink to silver and gold. That's, what, that's to give you a, 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 get a lot of ministers a message here. You go to church. You don't go there to talk about God. You go there to get money. Right. The same God that sent them fingers he's listening to. Mm -hmm. But now, this is an angel that was in the bush. Here's another angel. I know it was an angel that sent fingers over there. Now, Ezekiel was given a message. Let's go and look at that. Let's go into Ezekiel, the second chapter. See, sister and brother, the Lord don't do nothing new. Solomon say ain't nothing new out of the sun. No, it ain't. But being that you don't have no understanding, you never know it. <laughs> Ezekiel, the 
Ezekiel chapter 2. And that's what, that's what really gets to me sometimes. You, 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 you take all of this time and you prepare and study, turn over every little thing, examine every little sentence or syllable to make sure that you put it on the table and somebody come ask a question that don't even make sense and all of a sudden you get knocked off your, off your uh, punch. Then you come to me, well, you know, this might sound stupid. I won't say it sure do. Because <laughs> you should know better. Right. You should know better. Ezekiel 2 and verse 1. Read it. And he said unto me, Son of man, stand upon thy feet, and I was speaking to thee. Stand upon your feet, and I was speaking to you. Skip down to, skip down to verse 8. Verse 8 and go ahead. But thou, son of man, hear what I say unto thee. Uh-huh. Be not thou rebellious like that rebellious house. Open thy mouth and eat that I give thee. Uh-huh. And when I had looked, Behold, a hand was sent unto me, and lo, a roll of a book was therein. He said, I don't want you to be rebellious, son of man, like the rebellious house of Israel. I want you to eat that which I give thee. All of a sudden, poof, out of thin air, here come a book, a roll written, and all you saw was a hand in the roll of the book. Right. That's all you saw. Go ahead and read. And he spread it before me, and it was written therein and without and there was written therein lamentations and mournings and woe. Now he spared it before him. And he said, look, I want you to eat this thing. And there was written lamentation. There was written warning. And there was written woe. In other words, a whole lot of stuff is going to happen. A whole lot of stuff. And let's see what Ezekiel did. Skip down. Go to Ezekiel, the third chapter. The third chapter. And verse 1. Go ahead. More he said unto me, son of man, eat that thou findest. Uh -huh. Eat this roll and go speaking to the house of Israel. How do you eat a book, sisters and brothers? Read you read it. God is practical. You got some physical thinking person thinking that easy could probably put some water on to soften it up and bite it off. Eat the book. That's how you get messages through Verbal or written communication. So what had happened? Go ahead and read. So I opened my mouth and he caused me to eat that roll. Uh-huh. And he said it to me, son of man, cause thy belly to eat and fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. Uh-huh. Then did I eat it and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. Go ahead. And he said it to me, son of man, go. Get thee into the house of Israel and speak with my words unto them. Now, once he ate it, he said, now get to the house of Israel and speak my words to them. Yes, sir. How could he tell them to speak his word before he ate the book? Because you didn't know what it word, word was. Right. But when he gave you the book, Ezekiel read the book. So now he had something to say. Mm -hmm. Now, let me show you. Now, let's skip now. That was something I want to point out to you. Skip down to verse 12. I want to show something to you. Verse 12. Verse 12. Go ahead. Then the Spirit took me up, and I heard behind me a voice of a great rushing, uh -huh. saying, Blessed be the glory of the Lord from his place. Uh -huh. And I heard also the noise of the wings of the living creatures that touched one another, uh -huh. and the noise of the wheels over against them, and the noise of a great rushing. Ain't that what they heard on day of Pentecost? Yes, sir. That great rushing, the noise that come in, what come from heaven was the flock of angels, sisters and brothers. Right here is the cherub angels that the Lord traveled with. He said, because I heard a great rushing behind me. Uh -huh. What was it? That's the, just like you can hear a bird fly sometime and go, Brrr. that's the same thing they heard, like a rushing of a great wind. That ain't nothing new what happened on the day of Pentecost. It was just a flock of angels coming there. Now, Ezekiel heard the rushing of the wings of the cherub angels that the Lord traveled with. Ain't nothing new out of the sun, sisters and brothers. No, it ain't. But everybody likes spookery. It sounds better. But he brought a message, didn't he? Yeah. Now let's go and look at one more before we go back to Acts. So let's go into Revelation, the 10th chapter. Revelation, the 10th chapter.
You know, a lot of times I teach stuff and then you get people, well, Brother Boo, I don't know about that. I said, that's why I taught it to you. <laughs> Had you known about it, then I wouldn't have to say nothing. Revelation 10, and let's start at verse 1. Revelation 10 and 1. Okay, go ahead. And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with the cloud, and the rainbow was upon his head. And his face was as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. Now, John saw this angel come down from heaven. Moses knew there was, a, there was an angel in the bush because the book said. Now, John looked at, now, John saw a whole angel. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And he had in his hand a little book open. And he set his right foot upon the sea and his left foot on the earth. Now and he had in his hand a little book yeah. open, sisters and brothers. And he was standing there, the whole angel. John saw his feet. He saw his hand with the book in it. Right. And let's see what happened. Skip down to verse 8. Verse 8 and read it. And a voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again uh -huh. and said, Go. And take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel which standeth upon the sea Go and ahead. upon the earth. Uh huh. And I went unto the angel and said unto him, Give me the little book. Give me this little book. What the angel said. Go ahead. And he said unto me, Take it and eat it up. And it shall make thy belly bitter. But it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. Ain't that the same thing that Ezekiel did? He told Ezekiel, Take this book and eat it up. In other words, take this book. And read it. Yes, sir. The word's going to be sweet to you, but it's going to be bitter in your stomach because you're going to take this to your loved one. They're going to ask you, where'd you get this mess from? Right. Next time, they tell me, tell them out of that book that's on your dresser that you never opened up. <laughs> Eat it up. Go ahead and read. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up. And it was in my mouth sweet as honey. Uh-huh. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. Go ahead. Now, what did, why, once he ate it, what did his book tell him, the Lord tell him to do? Go ahead. And he said unto me, Thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. He told Ezekiel the same thing. Once he got it through eating, go and speak my words to my people. Once John ate the book, I gave it so Now you must prophesy to many kingdoms, nations, and tongues. Prophesy what? The words that you just read out of the book. Yes, sir. Who brought the book to him? An angel. Moses saw the book. M Moses saw the angel in the bush. And saw the burning bush, but there was an angel in it. Right. Brother Shalom saw fingers come over and write on the plaster. There, and Ezekiel saw a man come, a, a hand by itself come with a roll in it. John saw the whole angel. And on the day of Pentecost, all they saw was the tongue of an angel. That's it. Wasn't nothing spookery about this. All you have to do is know what, how the Lord operates. Right. I don't know if he tell an angel to come in with all that drama. But I tell you what, each one of them got somebody's attention, didn't they? Mm -hmm. Now let's go back to Acts, the second chapter. Because sister and brother, everybody like to deal with something that they think if it was real spooky enough, and I'm smarter than everybody else because I'm the only one that know it. Maybe if you're the only one that know it, maybe it don't exist. <laughs> Acts the fourth chapter. Uh, Acts two, rather than vo verse four. We're going to read one verse and keep it marked here because we're going to come back in it, but we're going to flip out because some of these little things, sisters and brothers, People don't pay no attention to. And I don't see why they shouldn't pay attention to it when I look at the misinformation that's going on. Acts 2 and read verse 4. Verse 4, read it. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost uh -huh. and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So in other words, sisters and brothers, all of a sudden somebody's speaking in a strange language that they don't know about because they were filled with the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost, you know, that's when the Lord pulled the Holy Ghost out on the church. Let me show you a, 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 a little secret here. Keep your marker here. Let's go into 2 Peter, the first chapter. 
Second Peter, the first chapter. Well, sometimes we should pay attention to what these apostles said. Second Peter chapter one. Second Peter chapter one. And we're going to read verse 16 and skip. One and 16. One and 16. Read it. We have not followed cunning devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were now, eyewitnesses now, of his majesty. Now, Peter's letting you know, look, we are, uh, we're not following a uh, uh, fable, something that was crafted. We were right there. We were our witnesses with him. But as something, if you get confused on this, I'm going to give you a better reference. Skip down to verse 19. Verse 19 and go ahead. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. What is, what's the more sure mean? Sure than what you got. That means this is more solid than what you have, isn't it? We have also a more sure word of prophecy. Go ahead and read. One, two. Ye do well that ye have ye take heed. Wait a minute now. New Testament Christian, pay attention to what Peter said. That whereunto you would do well if you take heed. If you listen, go ahead and read. As unto a light that shines in a dark place. Uh-huh. Until the day dawn and the day star rise in your heart. Until you get some understanding. Go ahead and read. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. So what is it? For go, the Go ahead. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, uh -huh. but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Now what was they moved by more on the day of Pentecost than all the prophets were moved by? They were holy men of God. They didn't bring no private interpretation. They were holy men of God, and they spoke as they was moved by the Holy Ghost. Right. Now, how is it that Jesus is going to come and take away something or replace something that he's always operated with? We saw them moved by the Holy Ghost. We saw Moses was filled with the Holy Ghost because he's full of the word. Jesus tell you in St. John 6 and 63, the words that I speak, they are holy, and they our life. Because when he kept telling me to eat my flesh and drink my blood, he kept thinking about eat, eat. Don't you understand? This man is so basic until he thinks the only consummation you can make is with your mouth. Right. Don't nobody pay no attention. So now, on the day of Pentecost, the man just come in there, and let's see what really took place now. Let's go back to Acts. And deal with with some of this. But before we go to Acts, I want to do something else. Let's go and look at how the Lord is dealing with this system, brothers. Let's go into 1 Corinthians 14 chapter, because we're going to go and show you what Paul was saying, and then we're going to go back. We're going to move on before I go back to Acts. I ain't going to take no shortcut. Because the PA people threw my, blew a half hour, but I'm going to make y'all, I'm going to take it back. <laughs> First Corinthians, the 14th chapter, because uh, them prophets, like I said, was moved. Men of God spake that they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Ain't that, ain't that correct? Yep. Now let's start at 1 Corinthians. Because these people spoke with tongues. We want to see some of this. 14 and 1. 14 and 1. First Corinthians 14 and 1. Go ahead. Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts. Uh huh. But rather that ye may prophesy. Now he said, Now follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather you may prophesy. Go ahead. But he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. Uh huh. For no man understandeth him. How be it in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. Now look, in other words, he's trying to get your attention. This is dramatic, but even when he do that, you have to have an interpreter. However, let's look at what is really being talked about here. Skip down to verse 18. Verse 18. 
Now, Paul's going to let you know I speak in Motown. In other words, I speak both languages and all that. Right. Verse 18, go ahead. I thank my God I speak with tongues more than ye all. Uh-huh. Yet in the church, I had rather speak five words with my understanding that by my voice I might teach others also uh -huh. than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. So big deal about an unknown tongue, right? right. I'd rather speak five words with my understanding and knowing what I'm talking about, that I might teach others or edify others than to speak 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. The Lord didn't prophesy that was to happen. That's drama. I'm going to show you what the Lord prophesied. Go ahead and read. Brethren, be not children in understanding. Uh-huh. Howbeit in malice be ye children. So, don't, so look, be, don't be children in understanding, but be in malice. And wickedness, that's what you be children in. Go ahead and read. But in understanding, be men. Uh-huh. In the law, it is written, with men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people. And yet for all that, will they not hear me, said the Lord. He said, look, be men in understanding. In the law, it is written, with men of other tongues will I speak to this people. Mm -hmm. I don't speak Hebrew. I am a man of, other, of another tongue. I speak this English tongue. He said, but for all of that, they will not understand. Read, go ahead, read the next verse. 22. Uh -huh. But for the tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, uh -huh. but to them that believe not. For but, a tongue is for them, not for them that believe, but for non-believers. Yes, sir. God go to dramatics to get you. You have people saying, if you can't speak in on tongues, you ain't got the Holy Ghost, you can't be saved. You are a non-believer if the Lord have to do this. If I have to lay my hand on one of these sisters and make her fall out and slob and roll, you are a non-believer. Yes, sir. But Shala would never believe that was the hand of God if it had poof come out of clear air and rolled on the path. Ezekiel might have questioned who was speaking to him had he not had a hand show up and bring a book to him. Right. But he said, in the law it is written, with men of other tongues when I speak to this people. Let's look at that in the law. Let's go into Isaiah the 28th chapter. Isaiah chapter 28. Got brothers following Esau when they should be learning this word so they can lead the world. Right. You're a dysfunctional priest. That's bad. Right. Isaiah 28. And verse 1. Isaiah 28 and verse 1. 28 and 1. Okay, go ahead. Woe to the crown of pride. To the drunk is the Ephraim, uh -huh. whose glorious beauty is a fading flower, uh -huh. which are on the head of the fat valleys of them that are overcome with wine. Now he said, woe to the pride of Ephraim. Let's talk about Israel. Our glorious beauty have faded. It's because we drunk and we are overcome with wine. I ain't talking about the wine you drink out of the bottle, sisters and brothers. Spiritual drunk. Isaiah 9 chapter tell you that, but that's in another lesson. But skip down to verse 7. Verse 7 and go ahead. But they also have air through wine and through strong drink are out of the way. Go ahead. The priests and the prophets have air through strong drink. Now look, sisters and brothers, why does a priest walk up to the uh, preacher walk up to the rock and he can't even stand upright? No, just, just said the Lord. You're going to get up and walk out, ain't you? That's right. But if he is spiritual drunk, you don't see him staggering because you don't have no understanding. <laughs> So the priest error and the prophet error in strong drink and wine. Go ahead and read. They are swallowed up of wine. Uh -huh. They are out of the way through strong drink. Yes. They err in vision. They stumble in judgment. They err in vision. They don't have no vision and they stumble in judgment. They don't have no truth. Go ahead and read. For all tables are full of vomit and for, filthiness. Uh, for all tables are full of vomit and filthiness. No matter where you go, you run into the vomit. Go to the Catholic. I'm on people in heaven. Go to the Baptist. People in heaven. Go to the Methodist. People in heaven. Go to the Lutheran. People in heaven. And believe it or not, go to the Muslim. People in heaven. You didn't know that? Right. 
If you've done real good and killed enough people, you might have you seven wives. That's what they say. No matter, no matter where you look, all tables are full of false doctrine. That's the vomit system, brother. Once the Lord saw that, then he asked the question. Go ahead and read. So that there is no place clean. No, sir. Go ahead. Who shall he teach knowledge? Then he asked the question, who? Who shall he teach knowledge? Go ahead. And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Because all these other people don't. Go ahead and read. Them that I weaned from the milk and uh, drawn from the breast. That's the sweet milk of the word. And they're drawn from the breast. In other words, they've been weaned now. Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. But precept must be upon precept. Precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Line upon line. Line upon line. And line upon line. Here a little. Here a little. And there a little. And there a little. This is the way. That you have to teach this word because God can have it scattered all over. Yes, sir. Then what did he say? Go ahead and read. But with the stammering lips. But with stammering lips. And another tongue and will he speak to this people. And another tongue will I speak to these people. This is what Paul quoted. Why? It's because he couldn't name no one tongue. Because he said Israel is going to be scattered in the all kingdoms of the earth. Yes, sir. So whatever kingdom you find yourself in, that's the tongue that you speak. He said, will I speak to this people? And what did it say after that? Go ahead and read. To whom he said, this is my rest with which ye may call the weary to rest. This is my rest. Some of this too that you might call the weary to rest. Go ahead and read. And this is my refreshing. Uh, this is my refreshing. Go ahead and read. Yet they were not here. Didn't Paul say the same thing? Yet for all that they were not here. It's all that simple system. All that simple. So now, on day of Pentecost, let's go back to Acts, the second chapter. Acts chapter 2. And we're going to start at verse 5. See, people want to make everything mystery. And it's going to be mystery because the priest has gone to sleep. Now the priest wake up, and he get off in the mystery. It ain't supposed to be like that. Then you take issue when somebody understands what's written. I suppose to understand this. I was chosen to understand. When I say I'm coming as a people, this is my job. And then people want to take issue with it. Acts 2, let's start at verse 5. Acts 2 and verse 5. Okay, go ahead. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. You notice he said dwelling at Jerusalem? Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Why was all these Jews? Because it was the law. Go ahead and read. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. Ain't that something? They all was amazed because every man heard them speak in his own language, sisters and brothers. Peter there was doing the talking. Everybody wasn't talking at one time. Uh -uh. Look what the book said. Go ahead and read. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Uh huh. Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? You notice they didn't use the word, are not all these that speak Jews, did they? Right. Or Israelites, they said Galileans. Like right now, I could go to some place where there's a, a big group of people from all over the world speak different languages, and then I get up there and talk, and they say, Isn't the speaker an American? Yeah, well, why is it then? Go ahead and read. And how hear we every man in our own tongue when we were born? Ain't that something? Ain't that what Isaiah said? With men of other tongue will I speak to this people, not with men babbling all day and don't nobody know what's going on. Right. How hear then these people in our own tongue wherein we was born? Go ahead and read. Parthians and Medes and Elamites and dwellers in Mesopotamia uh -huh. and Judea and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia, Perthia, Pamphylia and Egypt and in parts of Libya about Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians, and we do hear them speak in our own tongues the wonderful works of God. Simple as that, eh? People say, well, they got the proselytes and, and uh, uh, Cretes. And, it already told you there was Jews out of every nation. Some Jews that got off in the other stuff, they had been reinstituted. That's what you call proselytes. Right. 
They said, we all hear them speak in our own language, and we was born to wondrous work, wondrous works of love. Right. So Peter and them was speaking the language that they spoke in Galilee. But them flock of angels that come in, they were sent by everybody in person. You see it all the time on the United Nations. Why is it that we lose all practicality when we go to church? And if they was all speaking at the same time in an unknown tongue, how would they know that they were speaking the wondrous works of the Lord? Right. That's what Paul would say. You everybody spoke in an unknown tongue. How would he even know to say amen? Practicality is going out the window, sister and brother. But why is it with all these guys here? Let's go read. Let's go into Deuteronomy 16, chapter. Deuteronomy chapter 16. Deuteronomy 16, we're going to start reading at verse 14. Deuteronomy 16 and verse 14. Okay, go ahead. And thou shalt rejoice in thy feast, thou and thy son and thy daughter, and thy maidservant and thy manservant, thy manservant and thy maidservant, uh-huh. and the Levite, the stranger, and the fatherless, and the widow that are within thy gates. So all people are supposed to do this. Not only you, the males, but the you bring your wives, you bring your families, you bring the priests, you bring the strangers that will come into this thing. Bring all these together. Not just Israel. Skip down to verse 16 and go ahead. Three times in a year shall all thy males appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose. The three times a year shall you appear before the Lord your God. Go ahead and read. In the Feast of Unleavened Bread. That's come out the Passover. Go ahead. And in the Feast of Weeks. That's this day, Pentecost. Go ahead. And in the Feast of Tabernacles. That's what's coming up in the seven months, sisters and brothers. Go ahead and read. And they should not appear before the Lord empty. And this is one time you're supposed to bring something. Right. Sometimes people show up to church every week and don't even bring a quarter. I found that out one time, but we ain't going to talk about that. So all of them was there, sisters and brothers, because it was the law. They was at the day of Pentecost because it was the law. Yes, sir. And there was no such law among the Gentiles except the ones that Israel had taught. Now let's go back to Acts, the second chapter. And we're going to start at verse 12. Acts 2 and 12. You should be there. So go ahead. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What mean is this? Uh-huh. Others mocked and said, These men are full of new wine. Uh-huh. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. He said, look, some of them said, these people are so drunk, they're talking a bunch of language. You can't get that drunk, sister. Right. right. But Peter got him and said, look, you men of Judea, because it's all an Israelite. Listen to the words. The prophet Joel spoke about this. Go ahead and read. For these are not drunken as ye suppose, uh-huh. seeing it is but the third hour of the day. Go ahead. But this is what which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Uh-huh. It shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Uh-huh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Shall preach and talk. No, no. Go ahead and read. And your young men shall see visions. Uh-huh. And your old men shall dream dreams. Go ahead. And on my servant and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Go ahead. And I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs in earth beneath, uh-huh. blood and fire and vapor of smoke. Go ahead. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before the great and notable day of the Lord come. Oh, that's the day. This is talking about the year of Pentecost. Yes, sir. Oh, this is talking about when the sun's going to go dark and everything else. He said, Joel said it. Let's go into Joel and look at it. Keep your marker here. Joel, the second chapter. Joel, chapter 2. Because everything is prophesied, sisters and brothers. Ain't nothing new under the sun. 
What you do is you find out about it so you will escape that you need to escape. Joel chapter 2 and start at verse 28. 2 and 28. Joel 2 and verse 28. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass after it that I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Uh huh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Go ahead. Your old men shall dream dreams. Uh huh. Your young men shall see visions. And this is what Peter quoted. Go ahead and read. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaidens in those days will I pour out of my spirit. Go ahead. And I will show wonders in the heaven and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. Uh huh. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and the terrible day of the Lord come. So he quoted Joel and let you know that this is the year that the Lord is going to come. Yes, sir. Because before anything happens, this stuff has got to happen with the sun and the moon. Let's go into Revelation 6 chapter and look at it. Revelation chapter 6. See, it's all laid out, sister and brother. There is no reason for us not to know what the Lord is doing, but it's all structured in the 23rd chapter of Leviticus. Yes, and you got somebody running around trying to deny Jesus and missing the whole program. Revelation 6 and verse 12. Revelation 6 and verse 12. Revelation 6 and 12. Read it. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, uh -huh. and the moon became as blood. Go ahead. And the star of the heaven fell into the earth, even as a fig tree cast her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. Isn't this what we just got through reading? Yes, sir. Sun's going to turn black, moon red, stars going to fall. Just like a fig tree when it's shaking up a great wind. Go ahead and read. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it's rolled together. Uh -huh. And every mountain and island were moved out of their places. Every mountain and island was moved out of their places. Go ahead and read. And the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. Why is that? Go and ahead. said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us. And hide us from the face of them that sit upon the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. He said, fall on up and hide us from the face of him that sat on the throne and the wrath of the Lamb. Oh, you mean Jesus got wrath? Yes, sir. More than you can even think about. Why? Finish that. For the great day of his wrath has come, and who shall be able to stand? For the great day of his wrath has come, and who shall be able to stand? So the sun's going to go black, moon red, stars fall, heaven's going to roll back like a scroll. Yes, and the world is in trouble, sister and brother, especially if you ain't no servant. Now let's go and look at it from another way. Let's go into Isaiah, the 34th chapter. Isaiah, chapter 34. And we're going to start reading at verse 1. So next time somebody talks to you about New Testament Christian, you just get your book and walk. Because <laughs> you can't communicate with a dead person. Isaiah 34 and 1. Isaiah chapter 34 and we're going to start reading at verse 1. Okay, read it. Come near ye nations and hear and hearken ye people. Let the earth hear and all that is therein, the world and all things that come forth of it. So the Lord is talking about everybody on this planet, ain't it? I want all of y'all to hear this. I don't want nobody to miss this. Go ahead and read. For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations. For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations. Go ahead and read. And his fury upon all their armies. Uh huh. He hath utterly destroyed them. Go he hath delivered them to the slaughter. Uh -huh. Their slain also shall be cast out, and their stink shall come up out of their carcasses, and the mountains shall be melted with their blood. That's how many people the Lord going to kill when he going to kill so many, it looks like the mountain is melt. Go ahead and read. And all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved. Uh-huh. And the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll. Uh-huh. And all their hosts shall fall down as the leaf falleth off the vine and as a falling fig from the fig tree. So how many times that's going to happen, sister and brother? One time. One time. That's when Jesus show up. Go ahead and read. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Uh-huh. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumea. And upon the people of my curse to judgment. That's why I don't even follow them people. That's why I don't even threaten them people. In fact, to tell you the truth, the more I read what the Lord is going to do to those people, I kind of pity them. 
Because I know he's going to do it to him because he said it. How do I know? Because everything he did to us, he said he was going to do it. That's right. And he called on the people of his church to judge him. And God knows I know exactly why he made that statement. Mm. And he's going to tell them something else, too. Skip down to verse 8. Go ahead. When is the day of the Lord's vengeance and the year of recompense for the controversy of Zion? It's the day of the Lord's vengeance and the, re, and the year of recompense. That's the repayment for the controversy of Zion, which is the re. The Lord is going to let the whole world know who that belongs to. I don't even have to worry about it. I don't, that's why I don't have to teach no hatred. I don't have to threaten. I don't have to do nothing. All I got to do is be patient and be right. Yes, sir. That's why I take issue with brothers always trying to condemn somebody. You don't have to condemn nobody. Vengeance belongs to your God, and you can't take it like him. That's right. But this is the same thing to show you who Isaiah was talking about, who Revelation was talking about. Let's put us a name on this joint. Let's go into Matthew, the 24th chapter. Matthew, chapter 24. That's why the Lord called me to do this lesson, Jesus, the unknown God. That's what the people, the people don't have a clue who Jesus is. Their behaviors let me know, and their conversation let me know they don't have a clue who Jesus is. If you want to know how much the person know about a project or a particular thing, just get them to talk and just shut up and listen. 24 and 1, go ahead. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. Uh -huh. And Jesus said unto them, See not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There should not be left here one stone upon another that should not be thrown down. Now he doesn't know all this you're talking about, all of it is going to be destroyed. And that took place in 7 AD. Roman uh, uh, Emperor Titus, po uh, uh, Roman General Titus, tore it down. Then leave one stone upon another. Go ahead and read. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, uh -huh. Tell us, where shall these things be? Uh -huh. And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? They asked him some specific questions. But what interests me is what he said. First, go ahead and read. And Jesus answered and said unto them, uh -huh. Take heed that no man deceive you. Take heed that no man deceive you. Go ahead and read. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. For many shall come in my name, saying that I am Christ. Go and ahead and read. And shall deceive many. And shall deceive many. Where do you find all them guys that comes in the name of Jesus? Acknowledge that he's Christ. And shall deceive. Where do you find them at? In this Greco-Roman Christianity. All of them love Jesus. They love everything, but they won't keep his commandments. They won't keep his dietary law. Won't even keep the Sabbath day. Right. But he gives you some signs. Skip down to verse 15. Go ahead. And ye therefore shall see the abomination, the desolation, uh -huh. spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. Now, if you don't know who that is, you better find your church real quick. Skip down to verse 21 and go ahead. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. No, nor ever shall be. Uh huh. And except those days shall be shortened, there shall no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Look, sisters and brother, when Jesus made that prophecy, there was no weapon that could destroy all flesh. Not everybody got it, don't they? Yep. And he said, except those days be shortened, there shall be no flesh saved. But it's going to be a time of trouble like you never. He said, call it great tribulation. Skip down to verse 29. Verse 29. And go ahead. Immediately after the tribulation of those days. Immediately after the tribulation of those days. Go ahead. Shall the sun be dark. We heard that before, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And the moon shall not give her light. Go ahead. And the stars shall fall from heaven. Oh, and how many times that's going to happen? One time. Go ahead and read. And the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. Uh-huh. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Uh-huh. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Here comes Jesus, sister and brother. 
That's why Job uh, uh, made the statement. You understand? That uh, 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 let it, and when he wake up, the heavens ain't going to be no more. A lot of the prophets made that. Because when the first person wake up in the first resurrection, it ain't going to be what they thought it was. So here comes the Son of Man, Jesus, coming with power and great glory. Finish that. And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. That's when he's going to send his angels all over the planet. And his elect is Israel. And that's when he's going to gather Israel from every nation under the sun. And until Jesus comes back and his feet is on that ground, that ain't going to take place. Then that's we're going to start the gap. So when people, are the Jews back in the land? I said, Jesus over there. No, well, they ain't back. Now let's go and look what's going to happen on this day. We got two more places here. Three more places here. Let's go to 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. Because when he sent an angel with a great sound of a trumpet, a whole lot of stuff going to happen. Let's see what else going to happen. Let's see what else is going to happen. First Corinthians 15, and we're going to start at verse 51. First Corinthians 15 and verse 51. Okay, go ahead. Behold, I show you a mystery. Uh huh. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. See, everybody, everybody ain't going to die, but we're going to all be changed. That's why I found it was a great mystery when people took issue with it. With Enoch changing, you know, I, sisters, I can hear y'all, y'all preaching me over here on this table. Let me finish this, okay? So that's why I took this away. Well, see, en Enoch didn't die. He was changed. Everybody falling all out. Hey, he said, we all going to be changed. How can we sit on? You got the ingredient. If you please God, you're going to be changed. If you don't please God, you're going to be changed. But we ain't going to talk about that. Go ahead and read in a moment, in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, uh -huh. at the last trump, uh -huh. for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. So in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, that same trumpet is going to raise the dead, because here come the Lord, this one, mm -hmm. that seventh trumpet has to sound before he started the sixth, because it's going to be done at the coming of the Lord. Let's pursue this now. And look at the year. Let's go into Leviticus, the 25th chapter. Leviticus chapter 25. Because the Lord has laid this thing out, sisters and brothers. There ain't no need for being foolish and ignorant. You just have to read and study this. And you get brothers all the time taking issue with the Bible. You don't know nothing about it. How can you going to take issue with something you don't know? Right. And being that we so informed, in the uh, missing form, we ain't got time to go out and try to find a whole lot of other books. All we need to do is, is teach what's in this book. I do history to show how this book fallen before it took place. But this book got it all. 25 and 1. 25 and 1. Go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses in the Mount Sinai, saying, speaking to the children of Israel and saying to them, when you come into the land which I give you, then shall the land keep a Sabbath unto the Lord. Uh -huh. Six years thou shalt sow thy field, and six years thou shalt prune thy vineyards, and gather in the fruit thereof. But in the seventh year shall be a Sabbath of rest unto the land. As in the seventh year shall be a Sabbath of rest unto the land. Go ahead and read. A Sabbath for the Lord. Thou shalt neither sow thy field nor prune thy vineyard. That which groweth of its own accord of thy harvest, thou shalt not reap. Neither gather the grapes of thy vine undressed, for it is a year of rest unto the land. So the Lord said you can, and if man did that, you have a whole lot of healthy food. You operate in the land, grow food for six years, and then give it a year to recuperate. You don't have to put all them chemicals in there so they can kill everybody. Here people always tell me, well, see, I'm a vegetarian. You see, I eat clean. Ain't put chemicals in the ground. You ain't putting insecticide on the thing. You ain't no cleaner than nobody else. You're going to die quick as the rest of us. <laughs> it's all that simple. But skip down to verse 8. Skip down to verse 8. 
Verse 8, and go ahead. And thou shalt number seven Sabbaths of years unto thee. Just like it says seven Sabbaths a week. Now he says you shall number seven Sabbaths of years unto you, just like Pentecost. Go ahead and read. Seven times seven years. And the space of the seven Sabbaths of years shall be unto thee forty and nine years. Uh huh. Then shalt thou cause the trumpet of the Jubilee to sound on the tenth day of the seventh month, and the day of atonement shall ye make the trumpet sound throughout all your land. Now you're going on that day of Pentecost, a year, you're going to cause the trumpet to sound on the seventh month, on the tenth day of the month. Go ahead and read. And ye shall hallow the fiftieth year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land and to all the inhabitants thereof. Now that's what's going to happen. You're going to proclaim the fiftieth year and everybody in every land, Israel and everybody else is going to be liberated. You're going to proclaim liberty to everybody. Go ahead and read. It shall be a jubilee unto you. Uh huh. Ye shall return every man into his possession. And ye shall return every man into his family. And everybody's going to go to their own possession. And every man's going to go to his own family. Don't you know it's written in Jeremiah, the 50th chapter, verse 16? You can read it on your own. When this thing starts happening, it said everybody's going to turn to their own people. And they shall all flee to their own country. I wonder where you go, right. Mississippi. What verse are we? That was the end of 10. Go ahead and read. A jubilee shall that fifth year be unto you. That shall be a big rejoicing. That's a jubilee system. A great rejoicing and joy. Go ahead and read. He shall not sow, neither reap. That which groweth of itself in it, nor gather the grapes in it of thy vine undressed. Go ahead. It is the jubilee. It shall be holy unto you. Ye shall eat the increase thereof out of the field. Uh huh. In the year of this jubilee, ye shall return every man into his possession. Uh huh. And if thou sell aught unto thy neighbor, or buyest aught of thy neighbor's hand, ye shall not oppress one another. Uh huh. According to the number of years after the jubilee, thou shalt buy of thyself of thy neighbor, and according to the number of years of the fruits, he shall sell unto thee. But we ain't going to get off into that system of much. But letting you know that Jubilee is going to come when everybody's going to turn to their own people and everybody's going to go to their own country. And that's when the Lord is going to gather Israel to. But it starts when the Lord's feet touch the ground. In the seventh month, on the tenth day of the month, in the fiftieth year, which is the year of Pentecost, the year that the Lord's going to come. That's when the Lord's going to set everything in order and he's going to start taking everybody where they're supposed to be, it's the time. And that's what this day really means. This is the year that the Lord is going to raise, have to bring the first people in the first resurrection out of the ground. This is the year that the Lord's feet going to touch the ground. This is the year that the Lord starts to recover his people Israel and not a year before. Y'all understand? So now what we're going to do, sisters and brothers, we're going to read, read, we are going to uh, uh, turn out, and we're going to eat a little food and drink a little wine, but it's something we always read because sometimes we have holy people for the first time, and we don't want them to think that when we break out this wine that we are sinning. Let's go to Deuteronomy, the 14th chapter. Deuteronomy, chapter 14. I've had it. <laughs> I remember we used to rent this. Markham Expo Center out there. Uh, no, Dalton Expo Center. And a church ball. But we had contracts and we had to get, have a meeting. We had to have one more feast out there. And boy, let me tell you, if people couldn't stand it to get all these sinners in our place drinking wine. <laughs> but they couldn't do nothing about it because we was under contract. That is really stuff. I'll never forget that. <laughs> and the first miracle Jesus did was make wine. Deuteronomy 14 and verse 22. Verse 22. Go ahead. Thou shalt truly tie all the increase of thy seed uh -huh. that the field bringeth forth year by year. Go ahead. And thou shalt eat before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose to place his name there. Uh -huh. The tide of thy corn, of thy wine, and of thy oil, the first of thy herds, and of thy flocks. That thou mayest learn to fear the Lord thy God always. Go ahead. And if the way be too long for thee, so that thou art not able to carry it, 
or the plague be too far for thee, which the Lord thy God shall choose and set his name there, uh -huh. the Lord thy God hath blessed thee. Then shall thou turn it into money, bind up the money in thine hand, and shall go into the place which the Lord thy God shall choose. So now if the place too far for you to carry your corn or drive your cattle or whatever you're going to put in there, then he wants you to sell it and take that money and go to the place where he choose and do what with it? Go ahead. And now I shall bestow that money for whatsoever thy soul lusteth after. Uh -huh. For oxen. Oxen. Or for sheep. For sheep. Or for wine. For wine. Or for strong drink. That's Jack Daniel. And do what? Or for whatsoever thy soul desire. And thou shalt eat there before the Lord thy God. And thou shalt rejoice, thou and thine household. So, sisters and brothers, we're going to. We done ate the spiritual food. We're going to eat some physical food. We're going to drink a little wine. Turned on my TV. What did I see? I saw two men reading the Bible, trying to convert me. Got to change my life for the better. Got to change my life for the good. I must remember everything that I